Welcome into our football happy hour. Amanda Guerra, Brady Quinn, Danny Cannell here. Week one of the NFL nearly done. So far we've seen both Super Bowl teams lose. Also a handful of injuries, including Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. The Cowboys now in their season opener, a loss to the Bucks. Dak hurting his thumb on his throwing hand in a play in the fourth quarter there with Shaq Barrett. Now Dak initially saying, look, I thought I jammed my thumb, but x-rays later revealing it was a fracture. Dak undergoing surgery today. After that, the Cowboys will set a specific timeline for his return. Welcome back in, Brady and Danny here. Brady, we'll start with you. Obviously, a big blow to the Cowboys. We'll talk about Cooper Rush here in a second if they move on from him. But just to begin with, the impact this is going to have on the Cowboys this season. Well, it's huge. I mean, look, at least the one thing you can take away from that game is I thought they actually ran the football okay. I maybe should have ran, tried to run the football more. Without the offensive line, there going to be some issues. Look, Tampa's a tough team out of the gates to, to start off with, considering how good their defensive front is. But I think Dallas is at least going to be okay up front. We know their defense is going to be solid and pretty salty. It's more about the passing game, and and you kind of when you were watching Dak out there, it never felt like they could find a rhythm. Credit the Tampa Bay Bucks defense and Todd Bowles in their scheme, but the truth of the matter is, so that was Dak Prescott. He didn't get off to a great start. Now you lose him. You have Cooper Rush come in, and for a significant period of time, it's going to impact any chance of not only winning the division, but trying to get to the playoffs too as a wild card team. So they've got to do something. They have to do something now. Um, I don't feel overly optimistic, at least at this point. Now looking at the Dallas Cowboys, looking forward there, Danny. Danny, yeah, so yeah this is uh, I mean, it's a devastating blow, especially for a team that felt like they were going to contend for the division title. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of teams got off to rough starts and you can shake off a bad start, right? You can just come back in the next week. But injuries are something that can derail a season. And that's sure what it feels like this, this Dak Prescott is going to do to this Cowboy, uh, Cowboys season once again, because it happened a couple years ago, too. But... I, I just look at this team, and I think you have to look at the roster, the way it's constructed, especially at backup quarterback and the lack of a real viable option of somebody to come in. And some of this blame has to fall at the feet of of Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones for constructing a roster and taking a massive risk with not having a viable backup behind him. We'll talk about some option they can sign, but I think this is one of those things. You know, to be, to be good in the NFL, to win a Super Bowl – you got to get lucky, and part of that is good bounces, but it's also health. And we've seen a couple teams devastating injuries early, but none more so than losing your quarterback. And while it feels like okay, let's not overreact. This is a significant loss because of the drop up and the and drop off, and who's coming in when Dak is out. We had uh, Pete Prisco, Rick Spillman on this morning, and both sort of agreed that the Cowboys uh, didn't put themselves in a good position if no. this were to happen, and now it has happened. So it seems like you do agree with that, at least that point there. 100%. I mean, this is one of those things when you're combing through the roster and looking at, okay, where are the weaknesses on the Dallas Cowboys depth chart? It was the quarterback position behind Dak, and this is a guy that had already been through injuries before. He's a good athlete, so he will take off from time to time, which makes him more susceptible to having those sorts of issues. So um, that was already a concern coming into it. I think the other concern is for Mike McCarthy's job security. I mean, let's be real. If they're not, after the way things ended last year and now having this happen, and granted, it's not on him for their depth chart and what the roster looks like. That is on Stephen Jones. It's Jerry Jones, as Danny just said. You still have to wonder, though, if the Jones family doesn't look at Mike McCarthy and said, okay, that's why we pay you the big bucks. This is why you're our head coach. You have to find a way of overcoming, whether that's with Cooper Rush or whoever else we would potentially bring in. Uh, so, Danny, let's talk about some of that. And I will circle back to Mike McCarthy because we do want to talk about that. But when it comes to Cooper Rush, what do the Cowboys do? Do you have to go out there and start looking for someone else, or do you just try to stick with them right now? They're probably going to have to sign somebody just for depth alone. But even if you sign somebody, I mean, Brady knows this, it's going to take time to get somebody acclimated. There are some guys, and we'll toss around some names, that might have familiarity with the system, but still it takes time let me just put this into perspective, too, because August 31st, the Dallas Cowboys cut both Cooper Rush and Will Greer, their second and third string quarterbacks, as a little roster manipulation, and then signed them back on the practice squad before elevating Cooper Rush to the second team quarterback spot. That means they cleared waivers. Not one other team in the NFL thought either one of those quarterbacks was good enough to even take a flyer on. That's where I think this is a massive risk that they took and maybe a bit of arrogance because, as Brady noted, Dak's been banged up. He has not stayed healthy the last couple years. And for them to just 
egregiously overlook this and maybe they think like, oh, we've got another Tony Romo on our hands, like some complete unknown who all of a sudden is going to come out there and be the savior or at least be a great competent backup is an extreme bit of arrogance on their behalf thinking like, oh, we found somebody who nobody else sees value in. Maybe they're right. And if they are, I will be the first one to step up and say, I was wrong. You were right. But when was the last time that you've heard Jerry Jones or Stephen Jones step up and say, no, this is on me. This is our fault. They won't. And you're right about Mike McCarthy. He's probably going to take the fall if this season does implode. They were already blaming him after. And some of the, the post game and the comments that we've heard today from Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones talking about the offense, talking about they need to be able to do more. I mean, this is really setting up the groundwork for what will potentially be a Mike McCarthy dismissal after this season. I don't know if that means they're going to elevate Dan Quinn, who's done a tremendous job as their defensive coordinator, or if there's that guy who's out in L.A. right now (laughs) working for a network named Sean Payton who might have his eyes set on this position. But however you want to look at it, it just it already seems like this is set up for Mike McCarthy to fail. And it's a little bit frustrating considering it's a guy who's won a Super Bowl and really not even two years into it, you can already kind of see the writing on the wall. Starting 0-1 for the third time as his head coach. Uh, there is the Cowboys. All right, let's talk names, potential names that the Cowboys could be after uh, to take over this quarterback position now. I mean, the first one to me is Jimmy G. The reality is the restructured contract was done for a reason with a no trade clause. And a lot of people confuse what a no trade clause means. It doesn't mean you can't be traded. It just means you have the right of refusal. So if the San Francisco 49ers want to trade you, you could say, nope, I don't want to go to that team. Or actually, I do want to go to that team. So I will waive it and I'll make sure I go to the Dallas Cowboys in that case. Are they attractive to him? Uh, They have to be attractive to any quarterback who's looking for an opportunity to go with a talented roster and a chance to win a division right now. That would be the Dallas Cowboys. The problem is, I don't know that San Francisco's going to want to entertain this because of what we saw week one versus the Chicago Bears. Now, it was on the road, terrible weather. I don't want to put a ton into that for Trey Lance's you know, you know, start this year to start off the season, but the reality is maybe it's one of the reasons why they, they kept Jimmy Garoppolo around because they thought if there are some growing plays to Trey, Trey Lance, you could turn it over to Jimmy G, the guy who's helped you get to two NFC Championship games uh, and one, you know, one of those years going to the Super Bowl. So Jimmy G's the first that comes to my list. I just don't know if the 49ers are going to want to entertain that. Danny, what are some names you're thinking of right now? Jimmy G is the first one that comes to everybody's mind, but the 49ers are in a perfect position. Like Brady said, they've got an insurance policy. Do they want to give that up after just seeing one game of Trey Lance? Maybe they want to see how this thing plays out a little bit longer. The other thing they have is a massive amount of leverage. I mean, everybody knows the Cowboys are desperate right now, and they're going to ask, you know, you want Jimmy G, what are you giving us? And it's going to be a steep price for them to pay. So I don't know if that makes sense. It feels obvious, but maybe it's a little bit too high of a price. The options are not great. Like, you know, you're sitting there looking at other rosters like a Mason Rudolph who just got demoted to third string. And the Steelers, I do think one of the things that was interesting about that depth chart early, they had him listed as the backup. And then everybody freaked out and was like, what's wrong with Kenny Pickett? Then they dropped him down to third string. I think the Steelers did that to try to make Mason Rudolph look more attractive in the trade market. So I think that's a team you call. They're probably looking to move on from Mason Rudolph. You might be able to get him a little bit bit, bit better value, but is he a good quarterback? That still remains very much in question. The other thing is possibly calling up the Saints and calling up a guy named Andy Dalton who knows this system, played in Mike McCarthy's system a couple years ago. The Saints, you know, Jameis has looked good, but he was hurt coming off an ACL. They might be willing to part ways with him and go on a younger route behind Jameis. But at least he's somebody who can come in and execute your system, is familiar with calling the plays. Again, Andy Dalton, he's played a lot of football, but how much is left on him? I'm not so sure. So, I, And then there's one other name that's on the street that you could call. Carolina did it last year. A couple other teams have. It's Cam Newton. Like, he is a big-body quarterback who's played in this league. Brings a, you know, a, He'll sell tickets, that's for sure. And maybe you could work him in the run game and actually you know, utilize some of his skill set as a physical runner. But again, somebody who's taking a huge toll on his body, you worry about his health then in that aspect. So those are three options. But I think even as we kick around these ideas – this looks like the Cowboys set them up for failure by not having a better backup in place. You know, Mason Rudolph is another name that I think Danny had, had initially thrown in before the show in some of his notes. He would make some sense. He's sitting number three on the Pittsburgh Steelers depth chart right now. Had a good preseason. Obviously familiar with that portion of the cover, uh, country being an Oklahoma State quarterback. A couple other names. I mean, Nick Foles, we've obviously seen him win a Super Bowl before. He's sitting as a backup up in Indianapolis with, with Frank Reich. And Sam Ellinger had a great preseason. I think so much so they kept him on the roster 
He's a guy that could legitimately back up Matt Ryan, and obviously Nick Foles isn't the future there in Indianapolis. So he'd be a name that I would, I would consider, and I, I think you could maybe get him at a fair price. Uh, and then the other one on my list is Gardner Minshew. Like, this is a guy that I just think we have, we have underestimated. I know Pete's never been a fan of him, but if you actually comb through the numbers, he almost has a four touchdown to one interception ratio. He's completed 63% of his passes. He'd be a guy that I think would come in with some moxie, with some fire, and whether it's just for this period of time when Dak's out, or even to be a more legitimate backup moving forward, it makes a lot of sense. The only problem with trying to get a guy like Minshew is, I think the Eagles like him. And I think they would have a hard time parting ways with him because of how much they're going to run Jalen Hurts if week one is any indication as far as what that ground game is going to look like, given Hurts' athleticism, but how much they want him to run the football. He could get hurt too, so they might need Gardner Minshew. But he's another one that I would definitely kick the tires on and see if it'd be worthwhile bringing in. They want to hold on to him. The 49ers want to hold on to Jimmy G. Not looking good for the Dallas Cowboys as of right now. We'll see if they make a move sooner rather than later. Danny and Brady, hang on just a second here. So speaking of the Cowboys and their postseason chances here, uh, talking about with and without Dak Prescott there to win the division, to repeat his champs of the NFC East, 29% down to 15%. Playoff chances plummet 20% from 56 down to 36 you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.